Team USA had no problems in their first official game from the 2024 Olympics over in Paris. Nikolai Jokic's Serbia squad held their own for most of the first quarter. But it was when Team USA went to the bench in which we saw a debut in Kevin Durant take over to the tune of 9 for 9 from the field in the first half. KD and LeBron carried that momentum over into the second half. Team USA won 110-84. That was storyline number one. The second storyline was about who didn't play since KD did play. Jason Tatum didn't play a second in Team USA's blowout win. Head coach Steve Kerr after the game explained that he told Tatum that he wasn't going to play before the game and that he felt like an idiot about his decision. So we got to be honest about Jason Tatum and stop sugarcoating stuff. Dude's got a passive aggressive personality. Jason Tatum is one of the best players in the NBA. He was the best player for Boston in the regular season and one of their best players in the playoffs. We got to stop making excuses for why Tatum keeps getting overlooked for MVPs, finals MVPs, and now even positioning on Team USA's rotation. This is all about Jason Tatum's personality. Tatum is a guy that you want on your team nine times out of the week. But when it comes down to things that require a little more personality, that dog, that alpha male, that's just not who Tatum is publicly. And nothing is wrong with that. I like to use the Tatum and John Moran comparison, right? I think it's a really good one. I would say up until a year ago, because Anthony Edwards balled out last year, John ja Morant probably was right there with Tatum as the two best American-born hoopers under the age of 30. It was those two dudes. And what do we always say about John ja Morant? John ja Morant is impressionable. He was going to take on the culture of whatever city drafted him. And I just believe he ended up in a city in Memphis that has arguably one of the most desirable DNAs Memphis is a cool city. If you are somebody that's on the fence about who you are as a person, Memphis will make an impression on you. I'm from Memphis, so I can speak to this. People want to be like people from Memphis. Memphis has had a multitude of rappers pop off over the last decade. The culture just cool. There's no other way to put it. And Ja Morant being drafted to Memphis was probably the, the worst thing to happen to him, him being impressionable. I think the exact opposite about Tatum. Tatum is not impressionable. He's just him. He ain't took on the culture of Boston. Jason Tatum's just him. Like, you could have put him in Memphis. Actually, he has Memphis ties, if I'm not mistaken. You could have put Tatum in wherever. You could have put him in his hometown, St. Louis, if they had a team. You could have put him in L.A. You could have put him in Chicago. Tatum was going to be him. What does that mean? You get a guy that's not going to be in any trouble, that, that's going to gonna deliver 27, 28 points a game, help you get to Eastern Conference Finals, now help you get to an NBA championship. He's just stable and a great hooper. But when we start to talk about the, the ultimate highs and the ultimate lows, we don't see them from Tatum. You, when you want him to be that dog in that moment, when you want him to take that Finals MVP away from Jalen Brown, you're not going to get that. And I think we got to be good with who Tatum is. He's shown us that for pretty much the last six, seven years. That's a great basketball player. But when I look at Steve Kerr pretty much putting Kevin Durant in and shoving Tatum to the side as Team USA routed Serbia, that's a perfect situation for Kevin Durant. That's when he was at his best with the Warriors. That's the Golden State Warriors all over again. That is exactly what Team USA is. Did you see the smile on Kevin Durant's face? Did you see the smile on LeBron's face? That's what they want to do in the regular season. That's what they want to do in the NBA. That's the brand of basketball they want to play. They want to play in situations that they have dominating rosters compared to their opposition. The hell was that game even that close for? Jokic is pretty much out there by himself. Yes, there's some NBA players over there. But all of those dudes play third fiddle to the guys that's on the bench of Team USA outside of Jokic. So when I look at Steve Kerr, I kind of got caught on to what Steve was doing, the, the head coach of Team USA. 
I, I figured it out like when you kept seeing all the different rotations towards the end of the exhibition matchups, I was like, oh, I get it now. Team USA doesn't want to commit to one lineup. The only people he would commit to was Embiid, LeBron, and Steph. He wouldn't commit to that other two guard spot and that other forward spot because he was going to always give Kevin Durant that commitment. That's why he wouldn't allow himself to stick to one rotation in exhibition play. He knew Kevin Durant was going to come in. Now, what I did not expect to happen was for Kevin Durant to dissolve all of Tatum's minutes. I thought Tatum was going to at least find a way. We'll see how Team USA plays if they play again um, in a couple days' time here against South Sudan. We'll see how it goes, but, I mean, looks like the questions that we had coming into this Olympics have been answered. Looks like Tatum's the odd man out. Let me know your thoughts. Team USA looked phenomenal. Everybody not named Joel Embiid and Tatum because he ain't played. Looked phenomenal for Team USA. A dominating performance against probably one of their tougher teams that they're going to have to play this entire Olympic run. I thought Serbia was a really good matchup for Team USA. Actually, I think Serbia is a better matchup for Team USA than the team that's expected to get the silver medal in this, which is Canada, right? I don't think Team USA will have problems with Canada like that. Th their lineup doesn't work well against Team USA. But a team like Serbia with Jokic and the shooting that they got, I thought they were a team that could really give Team USA some problems. And we'll see down the line, depending on who comes out of group play. But uh, for now, dominating performance from LeBron and, and Kevin Durant. Them dudes look every bit of legend as we've seen over the last damn near two decades for both of them dudes. Time, love, and support. Let me know your thoughts. I'm out. If you are like me and love flexing your NBA knowledge, you should head over to the best place to play fantasy sports. That's underdog fantasy. For me, I love the pick'em game. It's super simple to play too. All you gotta do is go to the underdog fantasy website or app, pick whether a player will have a higher or lower stat line for that game, get all your picks right, and you can win up to 20 times your money. And when you sign up, if you use my code Ferro, your deposit will get doubled. You can't beat that. Again, head over to today's sponsor, underdog fantasy's website or app, Use my code FERRO and your first deposit will get doubled. Do you want to see your favorite athlete live in action next time they're in your town? Or do you want to see your favorite artist performing in concert next time they're in a city near you? Head over to the SeatGeek website or app and use my code HOOPSFERRO for $20 off your first purchase. Make sure you subscribe to the Is Mr. Teleferro YouTube channel and hey, donate a super chat. Follow me on Facebook at is Mr. Telefero, cop a supporter badge. The underdog fantasy promo code is Ferro. The Seat Geek promo code is Hoops Ferro. And follow me on Twitter at it's Mr. Ferro.